Hi everyone, it's Melinda. Today we're going to be looking at that beautiful dark blue stone we know and love, azurite. Uh, so azurite, as many of you might know, is a copper carbonate hydroxide mineral. It's actually very soft and known for its very deep blue color. Uh, and it's produced by the weathering of copper ore deposits. Uh, so during the early 19th century, which would be the 1800s, it actually wasn't known as azurite. It was known as chessylite. Uh, and that name was created after a very popular location for this mineral at the time, Chessy Le Mines, uh, near Lyon in France. So this mineral has actually been known since ancient times. It was mentioned in Pliny the Elder's Natural History under the Greek name Koanos, meaning deep blue. Um, and actually, Koanos is the root for our English uh, <laughs> color called cyan. Um, however, cyan is not the same color as azurite. It's more of like a, an aqua type blue. Uh, this one now renamed azurite uh, is for the word azure, which is kind of reminiscent of the deep blue evening skies that we often see in deserts or winter landscapes. So that's where the more modern name comes from. I'll start showing you. This specimen uh, is from Alnif, Morocco. We get so many beautiful minerals from Morocco. Here you go. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? Absolutely stunning. I'll show you what the back looks like. It's not very interesting. A little bit of azurite, but mostly just matrix. There we go. Let's see if I can get closer. There we go. You can see all the teeny tiny little azurite crystals covering this beautiful specimen. And I bet many of you can guess what that green is. Because azurite is actually one of two basic copper carbonate minerals, the other being malachite. That green mineral you see there is malachite. And they do often go hand in hand with each other. Isn't that beautiful? The next one I'll show you, I'm not sure of the location, but I purchased it in Glastonbury in the UK. It is a stunning, almost solid chunk of azurite with some uh, little samples of malachite on there as well. And there are some little crystals involved. It's absolutely gorgeous. It was This one was kind of a pricey specimen. <laughs> but well worth it in this little, little cluster in this little cave we've got going here. <laughs> and this beautiful specimen has azurite and malachite throughout and all around. It's quite a beauty. Such deep, vibrant blue. There we go. So azurite crystals are monoclinic. Large crystals are very dark, dark blue and they're often prismatic. Um, but well-shaped azurite crystals are, they tend to be a little bit less common. Uh, you're more likely to see specimens in massive form or nodular form. This would be more of like a massive form. Um, and even st a stalactitic form as well would be more common than uh, well-formed crystals. Like these are certainly crystals. You can see tiny little crystals here, but we're talking about, uh, you know, beautiful individualized well-grown crystals. They can be a little bit harder to come by. I 
I love how bright blue it is up here. <laughs> So azurite is actually quite unstable in open air compared to malachite, and it's often pseudomorphically replaced by malachite. Um, so that dark, dark blue stone can actually transform itself into that you know, green malachite, and how does it do that? Um, so that process is from weathering, uh, and when that weathering is taking place, um, it involves the replacement of some of the carbon dioxide units with water, and that changes the carbonate hydroxide ratio of the azurite, which is usually one to one, to one to two, which is the ratio of malachite. So they're very much related minerals and azurite can, uh, over time under the right circumstances, turn into malachite. And it makes sense then in that case that they're, you know, often seen together. <clears throat> so keeping that in mind, what are the uses of azurite? Well, even though it's unstable in the air, this wasn't really a known, uh, you know, attribute of the stone in, an in antiquity, in the, you know, olden times. Uh, so it was actually used as blue pigment. Uh, an example of this would be uh, Raphael's Madonna and Child Enthroned with Saints. It's a very famous painting. Um, the mantle that the Madonna is wearing was actually used, uh, was actually painted using an azurite paint and was once that beautiful dark blue. However, now when you view this painting, you will see that it is actually green and that's because the azurite paint weathered into malachite. Let's show you this one. I'm quite proud of this one. It's teeny tiny from Morocco. But like I said, singular shaped, nice shaped crystals that protrude out of their um, matrix like this are not as common. They're not as easy to find and purchase. So even though this is a tiny little specimen, I'm quite proud of it. Um, this right here, you can even see there's a bit of translucency there when I remove my finger. It becomes a little bit more vibrant blue at the tip is actually a solid crystal you can see right through it and there are some areas that are covered uh, in azurite that appear to be solid crystals that aren't quite but this one here is certainly a solid azurite crystal get all the cat hair off my fingers. I'm notorious for that. If you watch all of my videos, you will constantly see cat hair. They are well loved. My fur babies are very well loved. <laughs> oh, yes. So again, over here is where the, the solid azurite crystals are formed. Isn't that something? So occasionally azurite is used as beads or in jewelry um, or as an ornamental stone, but because it's very soft and because of its tendency to lose its deep blue color, uh, color and kind of weather into that uh, more greenish malachite color, that really limits its uses. And also heat uh, destroys azurite quite easily. So anyone that is working with this stone in jewelry, you know, would do so at room temperature.
One last look at my tiny little baby. <laughs> The next specimen is local. It's from Levant, Ontario. It's azurite with malachite in quartz, and it was gifted to me by a very nice fellow rock hound. So you can see the veining of the dark blue azurite. A little bit of the green malachite as well. And I did a little bit of research on this uh, mining location out of curiosity. <laughs> I tend to be quite curious when it comes to my minerals. Um, so this location began being interesting between 1918 and 1919. Um, a barite vein was found and was stripped and tested. And at that time, one ton of barite was sent to the U.S. to be worked. And since then, it has been closed and reopened and, you know kind of uh, looked into on a couple of other occasions and is now, I believe, an abandoned location uh, where rock hounds are able to go explore, which is wonderful. I've not been myself. Like I said, this one was gifted, but I do hope to go someday. That's for sure. <laughs> I love it. All right, azurite. There you go, folks, all of my azurite specimens so far in my collection. I hope you found that a little bit interesting, and I hope you tune in to my next video. Thank you so much for stopping by, guys. See you next time.